It's been said that the All Blacks are ruthless, the meanest, toughest, most unsmiling rugby players ever to tread this earth. I guess you should start at the very beginning. Today, we'll get our new outfits, including some high-tech long johns for the Irish and Welsh winters. I can't tell which is skin or thermo or cherry. And as you can see from Craig Innes' collection, there's certainly no shortage of sponsors' product. But I'll show you my new boots. So they've got a different sprig formation. It's called an FX system. And what happens is, um, because I w use so much on the outside here, because I like to step, so what happens is when I step, I'm using the outside a lot, so I've got more sprig space there, so I don't slip. Not too many slip-ups in the photo session until I try and mingle it with those ugly forwards. Hang on, I'm up the back. Isn't it amazing what you can find in the yellow pages, including a little extra height? <laughs> what do you want me? Yeah. It's all serious. This time. Okay, get a little bit happier this time. There we go. First stop Vancouver, where the boys in the cheap seats get a distant view of a different sort of football, which can be just a little bit confusing. Where's the ball? Oh, there we go. Ah. Oh, it's through. No, it's 25-16 now, so that makes it 25-22. 25-23 if they get the kick. Yeah. Yeah. No, they got 25. BC got 25. Of course, there's still serious work to be done, like training for the first tour match. With Zinni taking the warm-ups. OK, then when you get to the, half, the halfway, just pick it up at the front, and then just do a three-quarter pace to the goal line. Yeah, from the last 25. Okay, let's go. It's a really good feeling to get selected for the first tour game, so you can find what we call tour balance. On this tour, first up is British Columbia, or should I say, the BC reps. Vandenbrink goes up again, but it's knocked back and then kicked upfield by the BC reps. Tuingamala makes the run through the middle. Look at the power of Tuingamala. Glenn Ennis put him down, number eight. Joey Stanley. Tynan waiting for the ball to come out. It's still caught up in legs and feet. Finally out. Reeves makes the run through. Referee playing the advantage, and the centers go through. Stewart Ian Stewart. Up. Picking it up again. Roy He's back to ready. There. And Gareth Rees downfield, and John Gallagher gives chase for the All Blacks. There goes the pushover. They're trying for it. Will the ball come out? It is. Dean 
lays it back for Little. Not too bad either, you know. Too bad. Bruce Deans picks up the loose ball. Still bounces around. Finally, it's Gary Wetton. See the referee signaling that advantage again. He won't blow it up until there's a mistake made. If there's no mistake made, he lets it run. His hands drop. Play goes on. On the BC knock forward. Henderson. Henderson still in control. Lays it off. Zinzembro. Yes, These BC reps have had a lot of experience, and they're they're growing, and they want to make their uh, their presence felt. That's Steve McDowell, but they're playing the best in the world, and this is one of the reasons why. That's a great run by McDowell there. Look, he's over the line, but the ball's not down. Held up. No Deans will carry. Deans, the dummy. Yes, Deans. It winds up 48 to 3. And the New Zealand All Blacks showing that they are indeed the world champion side, completely overpowering the side of the BC Reps. Once we arrived in Heathrow, whew, the pressure was on straight away. The team had enjoyed Canada, where everyone was friendly and relaxed. Those were the days, because things certainly aren't so relaxed on our arrival. Especially for Buck, the old worn out question of professionalism. I've got no comment on that, sir. No comment on that. Worst job on travel day? Judy Boy. And guess who's trying to sort out this mess? All the papers over here. All the suitcases. Hey, Judy. Hey, Judy. Oh, you want to interview us? <laughs> I'll interview you. Okay. Looking around here. Okay. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Twiggy. Oh, oh, yeah. um, how do you feel? Oh, a bit oh, jaded. Yeah, yeah, a bit of a long time. Yeah. 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 So, um, how do you feel? Well, so yeah, we're a bit tired uh, after the flight, but... Uh, as I said a moment ago, yeah, a bit tired, a bit jaded. So I suppose after the flight you're probably a little bit tired, a bit jaded? Tired? Uh, no, jaded a bit. No, jaded, uh, but not tired. But not tired no. at all, no. no, we're feeling no. Like... <laughs> tired and jaded. They're pretty good words to describe us after this training session. But Grizz really puts us through our paces. The day after celebrating Foxy's new baby. But we needed a blowout with the Welsh tour opener against Carter not too far away. It's that guy, Gary Witten here. <laughs> Will you just face these jokers and show them what I mean by hands on knees? That bloody two doing it properly, actually. All right? Not down here, not bloody like this. Get your upper body. Oh, you did it well. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, much. Yeah. Take yeah. a look at this. Wurzel and Ronnie learning how to waltz at scrumming practice. Caused a bit of a stir back home, actually. Not really much to write home about, is it? I think they dance quite well. <laughs> My Achilles is starting to feel a little bit tender. Still, I guess nothing really to worry about. <laughs> the cut-off match is Ridgie's first run for the All Blacks. In the Arms Park, well, not a bad piece of real estate for an international debut. Great, eh? I played it twice. A bit worried about the harker, mate. Why? Because I haven't done it before, eh? It's really easy. I'm trying to practice, man. I want to get my timing right, eh? Sorry, you've got to look real dangerous in the harker. It's pretty important, though. Yeah. You ever think you'd get here, mate? No. Nah. What's it on TV, though, eh? And I thought, well, jeez, I'd like to go there, but didn't think I'd play here. Ian Jones shows just how mobile he is as the new boys get away to a pretty good start. But it doesn't take too long before we find out that the locals were lying to us when they said Cardiff would be easy.
Booth with the feed. Oh, good shove from the All Blacks. Back to Evans. Raya was in. Now across to his Edwards. Getting close. Yes. Actually, as you can see here, it's not until the second half that we really managed to put it together. Although we knew if we kept trying, eventually the defence would crack. This time the All Blacks hand it up to Fitzpatrick. This is more like it. With the big men in black charging now, Shelford. Five metres up, right in front of the post, and the All Black forwards have it under control. Richard Lowe charging, and yes, Richard Lowe gets the first try of the tour. Bashit, the one to Kerwin. Oh, that John Schuster was on a run that would have taken him in for the try. They might get one anyway, the way Alan Wetton's driving on, and they have. All Blacks near their own 22, back to Schuster. They're going to run it out here. Here's Kerwin having a run. Innes. Back to Schuster. All Blacks running for the first time. Here's Basham. Of course, in good old Welsh tradition, you can see Cardiff aren't going to give up. And it's very pleasing to see Matthew Ridd from members full back to there to stop wingers catching the ball. Brave fight by the Cardiff 15. 21 points to 15, the All Blacks lead. Now Basham. Can we see a good back movement here? Here's Innes. Pops it up for Ridge. The All Blacks have put it together. Brewer. Oh, that's a lovely try. Getting through that first one and having a win behind us, you know, 25-15, I think it was a good, good score for us. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I loved it, eh? Pretty nauseous. Um, couldn't get away for the win, eh? I was uh, a bit worried there in the first half. Yeah, it's sure pretty, you was. <laughs> it was pretty tough, eh? <laughs> we did a bit of running, though. Yeah, I, yeah, thought, I just, you know, I was knackered, eh? Like, um, I didn't touch the ball, and I was just running at the field, running back, and I just felt lost, eh? And then the second half, she came on. It was good. <laughs> After the match, while the boys are taking it easy, a couple of burglars are taking what they can from our rooms. <laughs> this, of course, is not the real burglar incident. It's a special reenactment for Spielberg Productions. The All Black Film Unit with one camera and 30 directors. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. The burglar busters, man. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, explain what happened and then go through it. Come in, come oh, in. I don't know what happened, so. Oh, man, I've got an awesome job being alone, man. Hang on, you can't stand in front of the camera. <laughs> Where's the damn light supposed to be, man? Get up higher. Get up on a chair up here. Okay, you ready? Okay. That's it. That's not Guys, don't be silly. Here we are, Spielberg Productions. We're just going to uh, reenact the burglary that took place after the Cardiff game. Um, I'll just quickly go through what happened. Matthew Ridge and myself were leaving the team room just over here. Walked down the corridors, round to the room, found two burglars by my door, chased them all the way around the hallway. There's one of the burglars here, Fernando Bodica. Oh, shh. Oh, I mean, <laughs> cut. And uh, Craig, Craig <laughs> this over here will be uh, another burglar. Um, got Craig there? Okay, they'll be. They're going to they're gonna be the two. Look at the buddy. Thug. You've got to get me and me and me and uh, me and Posty fiddling with the door, okay? And then the scene cuts, and you come back down here, and these guys are walking down, okay? You get to the corner, you're behind them as they turn the corner, you're behind them. No, no, them, no, 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 no. Hold no, no. on, get him a makeup on. Just look through the clothes, then. Just look through the clothes. Turn off the lights, eh? Hey? Okay, ready? No, 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 Posty's right here. Shh, shh, quiet on the set. Have you got those guys coming out the doors? No, we've done that. Okay. You, you come as if you've seen them. We're blitzing now. And uh, he turns around and sees us really close. So he's got to stop and he blitzes back. And we give it this one, bad tackle. Yeah. yeah. That's where the fullback missed yeah. the tackle. We're just making a film here. Yeah, Showing it all. Would you like to star in it? Action. Action. Here they go. <laughs> got it. Such a loser. Good job. And uh, we'd just like to thank Fano Bonica and Craig Innes for being good crooks for us, and uh, and Inga who played JK's part pretty well, and um, of course the cameraman and the, yeah. the lighting men and the Mum and TV Dad. guys. I'd like to thank Mum for having me. Yeah. Dad yeah, for being there as well. And yeah. Oh, thanks, Zinni. I think we should thank Zinni. What for? Oh, you know, Zinni being a great guy and all that. Okay, thanks, Zinni. Yeah, thanks, sir. <laughs> 
Where do we go? Straight down there. If you're a long hitter, go straight over the trees. If not, go straight down here. It's a dog leg. I'll go through the dog trees. Dog leg to the right or left? No, it's straight over. Dog leg to the right. Zinni, Zinni. Zinni. To the left. Zinni. 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 Down here, just in behind the tree. That's, yeah. You can see them. That's the sea that it is. And the yard past the trees. Yeah, I can see them. Dog leg. Dog leg where? To go down to the right and across? Shh. Warren Gatlin, well, he had a better start. Oh. And what handicap are you flying off at the moment? Uh, zero. It's scratch. Going off scratch. Off scratch, mate. Oh, right. And uh, hit a ball all right? No, not really. No. <laughs> Six inch basement. It's about six inches. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When Zinni plays golf, he really feels at one with nature, mainly because he spends so much time in the rough. Take it back, Zinni. It's uh, three. Zinni, I heard a lot about your golf yesterday. Um, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. I just had one of those days. It was a very off day. Um, uh, my form is usually quite consistent, but uh, that particular day it wasn't. I heard that uh, after your rugby career, you're going to take... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do that again, Kipper. I heard that after your rugby career, you're going to take up professional golf. Is that true? Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> no, it isn't. So there's, there's just a lot of rumours going around. Yeah, quite a few rumours. I, I thought about it for a while, but uh, with the way that I've been playing and the uh, form that I'm in, I don't think, uh, I think I'll just stick to rugby. Good support from Zinzanbrook. 15 metres out from the line, the All Blacks. McDowell in at halfback, as he so often is, Bodica. Out to Little, Stanley, Gallagher. Oh, that's a good try to the All Blacks. The game starts really well for the ABs at Pontypool. Ing is in great form, and it looks like the jet lag's behind us, and things start happening. Wide to Stanley now. Kerwin looking good. John Kerwin. Oh, and there's try number three. And a brilliant counter-attacking try begun way back. Good line-out, wasn't that time for the All Blacks? Up to Little. Little still going. Good run from Walter Little. Here's Gallagher again. Bodica ranging wide. Henderson's with him. Paul Henderson has Andy Earl inside him. Pops it up for Andy Earl. And Tuinga Mala will get a try. Touring's over for JK. As you can see, when Joe passes the ball, I thought I'd been shot from behind. Have a look at the slow-mo. You see, I miss a stride, hop on my left leg twice, and end of story. Nobody wants to see it end this way. About eight minutes gone in the second half. 31-3 at halftime, 37-3 now. Looking down the back this time, Earl wins another one. Here's Gary Wetton, who gets a good heat of head of steam up, holds it up nicely, support from Zinzanbrook. Outside it goes to McDowell. McDowell Henderson held onto it well, and Prano Bodica is in at the corner. What a lovely try. Sean Fitzpatrick. Gary Whitten in support. One more pass. And Ian Jones gets across for his first try for the All Blacks. The boys are looking forward to a few quiets after beating Ponypool 47-6. But for me, it's a different venue and a real different story at the Royal Gwent Hospital. Doctor seems pretty hopeful. He said... Might as well get in and get it operated on. So, got to do it. How does the leg feel? Oh, it's, it's not good. 
it's, it's, it's strange because I've snapped it here and I can't move it properly. So I couldn't, can't stand on it. So what they're going to do is put it back together in half an hour. So. You remember what happened? Sort of. I, Joe went through a gap and uh, he took the, the ball off someone. He went through the gap and I was too far away. I propped to go and get the ball on a short on a shorter pass. And it just snapped like that. You know, I heard it. I yeah. thought it'd been ankle tapped from behind. I sort of looked around and there's no one there. Pretty racy trolley, eh? Oh, pretty tired. Using the bat phone, Stooji, the manager, and Denzel call for my replacement, John Timu. It seems I may have started something with this injury business. Shuey, well, he's got a few problems with his groin. <laughs> just, uh, just needs a little bit of time to settle down. Just a bit tired, you know, sitting down in the bus for a while. I should be doing anything. Yeah. Just, no, just total, total rest now yeah. for, for the next 24 hours. Foxy's ruled out of the Swansea match after a massive head-on collision with Matthew Ridge at training, and Foxy's not happy. Right, all I can remember was just seeing Foxy come at me and I tried to get out of the way and we just banged heads. And uh, he's got a bit of a uh, wicked gash on his, on his tongue and a cut on his head. No, he's just got a splitting headache. <laughs> it's not exactly like the tunnel at Cardiff, is it? <laughs> just about to run out onto the field. Yeah, Actually, I owe a lot to the doc and the green stuff. He's the Welsh surgeon who put my Achilles back together. And with this new plaster, I'm on my way back to the All Blacks. I missed the Swansea match. Had to watch it on TV back at the hotel. But yep, good old Spielberg Productions were there. Posty on the right wing for the first time on tour gets away to a great start. Unfortunately for AJ Witten, things don't start so well. He's a good runner, is Anthony Clement. Oh, and somebody's gone down, Alan Witten, a hamstring, I think. He's grasping at the back of his leg. You see down bottom left, Alan Witten. David Abercrombie is very fast across, and that looks ominous. And Alan Wetton, a sad sight for New Zealand. He's had that bandage on his leg. In fact, he had another one on for years and years. But Alan Wetton leaving the field. Unfortunately, Alan Wetton becomes the new assistant tour director for JK's Tiki Tours. Here it is for Bruce Deans. Bodica. Schuster. Craig Innes from the right wing is through. Where's the support? Brewer there rolling it back into Deans. And Gatland gets it down. What a great effort by Gats, who can't even remember scoring after taking a knock early in the game. Just like Cardiff, Swansea are playing above their local expectations, but a lapse in concentration just before half time really cost them. They'll literally bring the, the grandstand down if they can manage a try, I'm sure. Maybe this is it. They are bringing the grandstand down. This is inside the 22. Shelford running on his own. Straight for Clement. Into Brewer. And Brewer gets... Well, did he lose it on the line? No, he's over. Jones. Anthony Clement. Parfitt caught by McCarhill. Parfitt gets up again. This is incredible. The man's touched the ball four times in the last minute and we didn't see it in the first 40. So you've got to admire the uh, tackling of the New Zealand midfield and, uh, and outside backs. Another big tackle there by McCarhill. Schuster, who tackled, I see, is down injured. Schuster down. We've already got Alan Wetton off the field. He's a pretty callous referee. He won't stop for uh, anything. Looks like Johnny Shoe's groin injury has put him on my ticky tours. I don't want him with me, and I'm sure he doesn't want to come on my tour. Twenty-three minutes gone. 
Deans to Shelford. Oh, lovely roll into Brewer. That's the one that got the try before when they're up a bit closer. Picked up here by Ron Williams. The All Blacks, awesome. Black power now coming through. Swung wide to Shelford. Now Bodica. Oh, lovely pick up by Ridge. And Ennis is going to get his second try today. Robert Jones. Clement on the blind side with Gatlin. Oh, infield to Hopkins. And that's three tries for Swansea. Ian Davies, the Swansea captain, is pretty happy with his boys, even though being beaten 37 to 22. What a young side, and all the boy couldn't ask any more. Can't take anything away from New Zealand. They're a fantastic side. We've got a lot, a lot of respect for them. But, you know, I think we gave them a day, game at the end of the day, something. You know, very proud. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a few days in the physio room for these two boys. <sighs> okay, good one. Cool. Just quietly, just quietly. And let it go. Just let it drop. Just one more, all right? Pull up. The pain scale of 0 to 10, then just at the moment, keep it around 3 or 4 on that pain scale. Don't go any higher, and then over the next few days you can build it up as you feel necessary. I'm just gonna let them go. So that's why you've got to do you know, your two stretches. You've got to do your stretch with your bent knee, and you've yeah. still got to do your stretch with the straight leg. One of the busiest rooms on tour is Abbo's. You can go there for treatment, entertainment, or just a few laughs. The boy at the back's real powerful. Yeah. Come down through the inside. So you took him up? Good driving by the one at the front. Boy at the no, back is still clean. Boy at the back is still clean up. Look at him. He's not. Ooh, oh, no, I think Jesus. Go on, the yellow got her, eh? Yeah, I think so. Which of the big arrows? This one. 6 arrows. 6 arrows. 140 arrows. Pair of 10, please. Single it. Big cave, cave man today. Going down the mine. Find a bit of coal, maybe a little bit of gold. Texas tea. Texas. Have you got your canary? Murray? Hey? Did you bring the canary? Hey? You can't go to Wales without going down a coal mine. Bang, there's no oxygen there. Oh, there's a lot of smoke there. Yeah, you just whip that on. Crap it out of the air. Yeah, it's only a purifier. It'll only help you if there's a certain amount of oxygen in the air. Oh, yeah, it's very uncomfortable, but it will get you out. And it helps if your manager's a West Coast miner. Right, we, uh, See you later. Off there where those work, yep. Yeah. Neath is right in the middle of Welsh Rugby Territory, and the next game promises to be our toughest yet. Welsh champions last year, Neath really fancy their chances, and so do their supporters. Neath will win, normally. It's obvious, isn't it? Neath to win, yes. No, I'm not joking. No, Neath to win. Paul Henderson won't have too many fond memories of Neath, but soon I wasn't going to be the only one on crutches. Actually, the ref, England's Fred Howard, well, he was pretty lucky he didn't get injured as well, because they certainly are fanatical about their rugby down here. Even the Neath coach, Ron Waldron, is caught up with the atmosphere. The two different approaches to rugby are pretty well summed up by these pictures. On the all-black faces, it's a study in quiet determination. While the Welsh, well, they prefer a slightly more worked-up approach. The All Blacks approach certainly gives us the better start.
Ball coming nicely for Bishop. Once again, working the blind side. All Black's dangerous out there. Flicks it up to Innes. Oh, left Thorburn for dead. Craig Innes, oh, great try. But then things take a sad turn. The tour ending for All Black number seven, Paul Henderson. The ball went back to Walter. And I just took off around behind him. Um, tried to secure the ball. And look, I'm sure someone coming from the side and just uh, smacked me in the knee. And I knew straight away that it was fairly serious. Mm. Everyone fell down on top of me. And when I got up, it felt like there was a tennis ball growing inside the, the inside of my knee. So I just struggled to the line out and tried to run again. And uh, I knew I was finished yeah. Second half begins here at the Knoll. New Zealand leading 13 to three. Frano Bodega kicks out. All Blacks playing into the wind. This is Mark Jones. Good run by him. They finally got him down. Bridges, Williams, Thorburn up. Bateman through. Edmonds. Oh, a glorious try by Alan Edmonds. Neath continued to put the pressure on. That is until our attack is ready to strike. Now the All Blacks running a wide little, out to win us, must score here, Gallagher, and John Gallagher gets his second, and that's a big relief for the All Blacks. They might even try and push over, they seem to have the better of the scrums. Brook controlling it, still controlling it, and Zinzan Brook goes through and gets the try. Which makes the game safe for the All Blacks. Zinzan Brook with his 13th try in 13 games holds the ball aloft. So another All Black victory, 26-15. But things turned pretty ugly after the match, with the crowd taking out their frustrations on the ref. I mean, no one likes to lose, but someone has to. No, we didn't want to lose a game, we didn't want to lose a game anywhere, especially in Wales, but... Uh, Leading into Perth this Saturday and then the test the following Saturday, uh, it's important for our build-up. Uh, you know, some of the injuries aren't too pleasing. Uh, that's the game, I suppose. He's a nice man. Yeah, he's, he'd be a nicer man if he was on ground and quartered. Hey, about right? Do you want to say hello to New Zealand? <laughs> well, here we are at the uh, the Knoll, the home of Neath Rugby, and uh, just game's only been finished about half an hour now, and um, Titanic struggle it was. As you can see, a lot of people are still hanging around. I think they're after the referee's butt, actually. Um, I don't know why he thought he did quite a good job, but uh, that's how it goes. The thing was, I was actually chatting to a few of the Neath boys afterwards. Well, you would as well. And they're not bad guys. Nice guys. You know, they're good guys, the Neath players themselves. But yeah, yesterday, crazy. did you see that winger? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he was. That made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know this guy was absolute, absolutely mad. Yeah, he was a nutter. He was absolutely nutter. Yeah. What happened in that try, by the way? Well, I think... It was five Frano, or three, yeah. Frano, Frano was in the ruck. Frano and Walter got tied up in the ruck, and Walter got out um, a little bit late. Mm. And I think Joe thought Walter was going to get there, but he didn't, so Joe went out, one out on his man. And um, Walter wasn't there in time, so the guy came through. Then I had the centre, who wasn't a bad guy, and the nutter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they'd be better players if they weren't so fanatical when they run out? When they spend the first mm. 20 minutes chasing after... When I was watching the Swansea game, I was a dirty dirty for the Swansea game. And I was just looking at one of the, the Swansea props, and he was jumping up and down, doing the pogo, you know, and just waving his head around during the national anthem. And then when it finishes, he jumps up again, just runs straight into his other prop. <laughs> My replacement, John Timu, has arrived and is undergoing a crash course in the all-black moves. This is about the quietest I've ever seen, Ridgie, but the mood is pretty serious as we prepare to move on to Kalinithli. We'll just 
moving bungalows now, guys. I've got my private little servant here, Rich. Yes. Rich is a top man. My roommate doesn't help much. Oh, he's, he's like a guitar solo, isn't he? He's a bit of a guitar solo. I'm not helping. Right. Is that all? We're like a nomadic tribe. Just, yeah. Eat plenty of anchor butter. That's the main thing. Or New Zealand lamb. We're shifting house. Let's go, guys. Come, Bish. Come on, young fella. Let's go. Watch your legs. Bye, guys. arriving at my new bungalow. I haven't got a servant yet, but I'll find one shortly. They've put me by myself, thank God. Take it steady, in your time. Oh, double bit, double bit. Let me check out the video, see if I've got a bit of a video there. By Bruce Raymond. Any videos? Not a bad looking cult by Scungy looking hotels, anyway. Oh, racist. On tour, we always <laughs> toss to see who gets the best bed. Unless you're scared of the Fords, did you flick? I'll give them first pick. Did you flick, did you? We did. Yeah. What was the score, JT? Well, I beat him again. I'm moving by myself. So I don't have to toss one of the big fellas for a double bet because I always lose. We know the game against the Scarlets will be a tough one. They beat the All Blacks in 72, as the locals keep telling us, and one Grizz Wiley was in that 72 All Black side, and the boys know that he'll want to win. And that's a painting by a local gentleman there who presented it to the club. Were you around? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Were you proud? In the I was very proud. I was very proud that day. And all the people, they all, you know, they were all delighted that uh, they'd beaten uh, the All Blacks. The boys don't look too happy with the local weather. In fact, the locals don't look too happy either. Clinetley has turned into a wind tunnel with hurricane force gusts. Some people want to call this game off. But those West Coast miners, they're tough. Let's get on with it. So there's the first view of the New Zealand team coming onto this storm-tossed Stratty Park where there are winds up to 100 miles an hour and you can see that on the far side the officials today have not allowed any supporters onto that grandstand, that temporary grandstand because the wind is so great it's too dangerous to allow people there. So there's nothing sure of, there'll be high drama at Stratty Park today as Grant Fox gives it a gentle little nudge and you can see that it carried almost over the dead ball line in the fall. New Zealand to play the first 40 minutes with the wind so the game actually begins here with a kick out from Stevens. And look at that, curling back. It did it clear the 22-meter line. Referee McCartney says it didn't. And that's the kind of problems there are going to be in this match today. Foxy gets a shot at first points, and it may be close. No kicks easy in this one. Three nil. We come pretty close to a try early on but Sean's called back for a double movement. New Zealand in control, is there a halfback? McDowell's there, ready to substitute. And the try is scored. Try scored. New Zealand have scored a try, but who knows who got it? Ahead only 7-0 at half-time and turning into that hurricane, the Scarlet supporters thought the All Blacks were vulnerable until our fours took control. Actually, it seemed easier playing into the wind as long as we kept possession. Just the sort of game the Fords enjoy. So here it is for New Zealand. Deans, Fox, 
Walter Little through, beats his man. Good run by Little. Outside the 22. Deans again the narrow side. Fullback, Bird is in trouble. And Ennis gets onto him. You know, the supporters club here at the net is called Cyclops still. <laughs> so they, they recognize themselves that they are a little one-eyed in their view of their team. Shelford going right to Deans. Oh, just short. And the try scored, and I think Shelford might have been. Let's look. And it's Andy Earl. Andy Earl gets the try. And it's 11 to 0. And that's how it finishes 11 0. And while we're pleased, the home crowd isn't so happy. Once again, taking their anger out on the poor old referee. They, um, they seem to think that everything he did he gave us the foot and that uh, the ref was wrong about it. And um, there's a lot of young kids in front of us, and they were sort of after his head after the game, sort of thing. So uh, when the final whistle went, I just skipped an eye on the ref and I sent a few people running towards him, so I thought I'd better just mind his back, so to speak. But, uh, just before I got there, one guy came from the side and kicked him pretty badly in the ankle. Uh, it looked pretty sore, actually. Um, and another guy came from behind to, to give him a punch, but uh, I was in between at that stage and nothing came of it. Sometimes I thought the, the ref was a bit harsh, but there we are. Obviously, he's, he's got the whistle and it's his decisions. Uh, we were just trying to obviously stop New Zealand driving, and uh, we done it to the best of our ability at times. Unfortunately, we broke the law and we paid for it dearly without giving away a lot of penalties. A scrum every minute must have been difficult to sort of play and hard for, hard for some of the outside backs. I mean, I saw you take it up a few <laughs> times and smash on in there, but it must have been difficult, difficult oh, conditions. Yeah. I mean, the conditions were, were quite the worst um, I've ever been involved in. Um, but moving the ball was impossible. And the forwards were, you know, were, were doing the right thing up front, so it was a matter of just you know, playing it tight, grinding away. I mean, we just had to work our way down there. Inevitably, one kick had put us back. We just had to keep grinding, and it was using up time, so you know, it worked in the end. You're quite happy though with the, with the way it went. 11 points, I reckon, I reckon it's a good oh, one. Oh yeah, the I mean the, the guys are wrapped. I mean, you know, given the conditions, um, you know, I thought it was marvellous. The commitment, the togetherness was quite incredible. To be honest, we weren't that unhappy to be on the bus going back to Cardiff. Some over-enthusiastic home fans let their emotions overflow in the bar at Stratty Park Hotel, and I can tell you, we weren't in the wrong. Anyway, enough said. As the young guys check out the Cardiff shops, Kevin Shuler, alias Herb, well, he's joining the side to replace my roomie, Paul Henderson, who unfortunately, well, he's about to return home. Well, within a week, I'll be able to walk on it without, without these things and stuff like that. But uh, three to four weeks, everything's like the ligaments are healed. But the big thing is uh, the loss of muscle, the quad. And I have to build that up because that supports an knee as well. Mm. But uh, hopefully, uh, well, I will be running before Christmas. Lucky whoever. Yeah. The, um, the tour was it, you know, did you sort of, I suppose it's a bit hard because a bit like me, you know, you're just starting to get into the role of things. I mean, it was my third game and I was starting to get into it and starting to feel good yeah. and, you know, starting to relax a wee bit more. Same for you, first tour, first time as an All Black, must be... Yeah, I, uh, when I went back to the hotel afterwards, I sort of had time to sit back and reflect. And, you know, like everyone, you sacrifice so much to get into these teams. And it was really hard. That's when it really hit me that, that you know, things are bad. You, you give so much to get into the team. Mm. I had, uh, that was a third game, really starting to warm into it, you know, and enjoy the tour. And you blow out. Yeah. And after that, there's sort of nothing there. You've just got to go home. Yeah. Well, it's been a great trip, you know, and uh, I'd rather have three games for the All Blacks than none for the All Blacks. That's dead right, yeah. Just in behind there. When we arrive in Newport, the opposition players look a little bit curious and a little bit worried. I think they've got good reason to be, as the All Blacks need a big one before the test. Shelford's taking the New Zealand team right down in front of the Newport players who've gone right down to the goal line. <laughs> this is another break with tradition. Look at this. This is a real challenge. Right under the goal post, this Haka. John Timu shows some skills in his first game for the Blacks. Watch how he pulls the spin back.
things are shaping up pretty well. Gatlin to Basham. Away to Fox. Schuster. Timo is through. And Terry Watt's going to get his first try of the tour. And what a lovely move. Fast hands by New Zealand. Out to Schuler again. To Terry Wright, setting it up for his winger, his opposite, Schuster. Now Fox. Graham Bashup. And Bashup's going to go in the corner for a glorious try. Now it's come for Bashup, who's enjoying the good conditions to pass today. McCarhill in midfield, putting Schuster through the gap, and here's Gallagher steaming off Schuster's pass, and John Gallagher's in under the posts. Bashup digging deep. Fox. Timu. Nice burst and a lovely fend. And John Timu in his first game for New Zealand gets his first try. Where does Shelford? Just a three. Oh, lovely switch to Brook. Lovely sidestep by Brook. And Schuler, the debutante, is also going to get a try in his first outing. Bishop. Shelford, who's had another good game. Graham Bashop's played well also. Here's John Timu down the right wing side. Cutting back. Bashop comes away with it again. Fox to Schuster. Here's Gallagher in again. Can he set Terry right up again? Looking for Wright. Pops it up for Wright. And Bernie McCarhill will get his first try for the All Blacks. All the way to the river, <laughs> 54-9 on the eve of a test match is not too bad, with some of the backs in particular proving they're right back to form. Johnny, uh, yesterday's game, back to your best form. Uh, I suppose the league scouts are out watching again, and a couple of short balls there put uh, players in, in the gap and uh, a couple of good tries set up. Well, yes, Bruce, um, I'd be very, very surprised if I don't get a real big offer within the next week, because... I uh, was dangerous in those short balls. <laughs> How does Chris Wiley do it? Not even the guys he used to play against can work that one out. As you can see, right in the heart of the Valleys to prepare for this test match. And there are a couple of new names in the test lineup. Posty gets a right wing position after performing well there. And Bash, he's got the halfback spot you were under, and under heaps study, of media Bruce, attention. And obviously, you played early on in the season for Canterbury, but then when Bruce came back from the States, you haven't played that much first yeah, class rugby season. I've set most of the season on the bench, and that's yeah, been pretty frustrating. I've got a few games. You know, obviously, um, you played on the Arms Park before, um, but there'll be a very substantial crowd on Saturday. Um, the ground is steeped in tradition. Um, you know, what, what are your feelings about you know your first test on the Arms Park? Well, I, I suppose you couldn't really ask for much more, could you? You know, um, if it wasn't going to be at Eden Park, well, I suppose um, Cardiff Farms is, is the place to play it. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm absolutely wrapped about it. Right. And how do you feel about, um, you know, the job you've got to do? Um, oh, well, um, I've, the guy that I'm marking, I've, I've marked before. I know, I know what he's like. Um, so, you know, I suppose it's just a bit of having a go at him. Yeah, I think it's, it's good to be a had my first test after three years in the All Blacks, you know. Been looking forward, looking forward to it. The eve of a test match is, of course, a very serious affair. There's not really much time for horsing around. Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless, of course, if your name's Zinzan Brook, the biggest cowboy with the smallest horse in town. <laughs> Hey, Don't hurt it. <laughs> Let it go, Richard. Let it go now. Give it a whack on the bum. Give it a whack. Just stand there, Zinn. Hey, Of course, the hard work is still getting done.
And it's always important for the team to get away from all the hype so the players can feel relaxed going into what will be a big test match. Yes, we are tourists and we do enjoy it. Back in Cardiff, the city is really building up for an all-black assault on the Arms Park. An army of Kiwi supporters are here, while the sacred turf gets a final manicure before the big day. In the team room on the night before the test, Dirty Harry's helping the motivation as the hour of the match draws closer. get a feeling for the crowd and for the ground to sort of give you that feeling that you're in a test match it's always nice to get out there and walk around Motion charged atmosphere. It's Paul Corbin gets it underway. And isn't it great to see my mate Posty? Well, he started so brilliantly. Now Basher feeds it up to Craig Innes. The All Blacks will get in behind him and drive him over. He does. Craig Innes, two minutes into his Test career, has scored the first try. Feels like a wave. Um, 
you know, just picks you up and drives you over the line. And that's what, you know, the guy's gone behind me and uh, took me over. So, you know, I was wrapped. Now Grant Fox. That's a lovely kick. Six points to nil. Just two minutes gone in the game. And so Wales are in the game with their first points. And Paul Thorburn is the first Welshman past 200 points in international rugby at six points to three. Okay, so the line out just out from the 22. And again, Sean Fitzpatrick having difficulty hearing what the calls are. So there's the 22 meter line just to the right. The All Blacks leading by six points to three. The try scored by Innes. Palmed down by Andy Earl. Now here's Steve McDowell on the charge. What a good run. Almost to the 22. Oh, and a Welshman came round. He looked a bit offside, but the referee says carry on. Schuster up to Gallagher. This is the first one. There's Joe Stanley. 10 meter line in Wales territory. Stanley getting a real working over down there, and it's coming on the Welsh side for Jones. No, in fact, it was not forward. Well, a very interesting sequence of play there. Great run by McDowell. But poor old Smoke and Joe got caught at the bottom of the, the Welsh ruck. He looks okay, though. In off the crossbar. No, it's not in. Taken by the Welsh with the ring. So Fox misses the opportunity from a handy position, and finally it's cleared by Jones. It's midway, 22 and halfway. Back to Anthony Clement. Here comes the one for Gallagher again. So Wales, after conceding that early try, have now level up with 16 minutes gone. Although the Welsh were playing a lot better than they had done down in New Zealand, we should have had another try when Richard Lowe crosses the line. Oh, the ref doesn't see it. And Richard's not amused. I think Llewellyn is not doing too well in those lineouts. Now, Bashup, that's a better running ball. Stanley, oh, crunch into Mark Ring, who did not like it one bit. This is good ball for New Zealand here again. McDowell is on the wrestle. And a bit of a tussle there between Pugh. But look at the way McDowell has crashed away. Oh, what a brilliant piece of play by Steve McDowell. Over goes Thorburn. And he's going to be penalised in there. Going into half time, the signs were there that the Welsh were due to crack pretty soon. We're climbing over the line. We've got to go past the line and leave the last guy on the, at the back of the ball. As soon as we're crossing, we're going down. Too many hands. Put the ball to the back and go all the way across. Then clap it. Go right across there. Come on now. Get up. Kick back. Six points. Our kick short left. Uh, there, kick. Right up. Kick. 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 Come on, a bit of confidence, eh? Little one, 40 more minutes. 40 more minutes to make the tour. Have you got it here? This is the first scrum of the second half as the All Blacks lead by 12 to 6. Graham Bashup away to his captain. John Schuster on a good run. New Zealand need to be much more positive. Bashup has made a little fumble there, but I don't think it was a knock forward. Bill Pugh and they're working hard. Now Bashup. Away to Brewer. There's space here. Brewer finding Earl on the inside. Numbers for New Zealand. And Shelford himself. Just 10 metres to go. Bashup. Oh, a strong challenge, and Bashup just went down near the corner flag. So the pressure is going on the Welsh team. That's the corner flag there. Loose ball, Robert Jones running it out. Charged down by Pierce. Schuster. Got forward. Good call by referee McNeil, but so close. Picked up now by Hall. Lovely tackle by Wetton. 
Thorburn buried by a brilliant tackle by Stanley. Flash at this time. Wide to Stanley. Gallagher through. Bishop. And Bishop on his debut scores a try. There's the card of Castle in the background. That's how close it is to the uh, famous stadium back through Westgate Street where there are many hundreds of people outside waiting for the chance to buy tickets today. What a wonderful location for a marvellous sporting occasion. Paul Thorburn from right in front. Kicks a third penalty goal. And so now it's 21 points to nine. The All Blacks still have a very handy advantage. We've had 22 minutes now in the second half. 21 to nine. Sean Fitzpatrick away. Playing on the same ground, following his father into a test match between New Zealand and Wales. Bashup. Fox. Schuster, Gallagher in, Ennis, and the New Caps get their third try. Second for Craig Ennis. A brilliant try, the Kiwi flags waving. And Craig Ennis and Graham Bassett continue this remarkable sequence of the new fellas, the new kids on the block. Now it's held by Mark Jones. Comes to Robert Jones. Here's Clement. How's this for strong? But he actually missed him there, but still scares him into falling down. Shelford got a hand on his boot. Jones holds it up. Thorburn going into play at half and He doesn't need to, though, because Davies carries it on. Good sequence of play here from the Welsh, but they knocked it on there. And that was the end of the All Blacks. Back to Schuster into the wide open spaces. Now there's nobody home here. Here come Gallagher and Innes. Emir goes back. He's done well to hold it up. All Black getting there quickly though. Gallagher goes in, does well. Feeds up to his Wellington teammate Murray Pierce. Pops it back to Andy Earl. 22 meter line in Welsh territory. Now Basham. Up to Fox. Here's Joe Stanley. McDowell. Good tackle in centre field, but he released it well now. Brewer up to Fox. Here's Terry Wright on the left wing side. And right through. Terry Wright gets the try. What a magnificent build up from the All Blacks. Fox from the sideline. Oh, lovely kick. Magnificent kick from Grant Fox. And the All Blacks starting to run away with it now. His first big game on Battle of Arms Park. Bending around the decision, proving well worthwhile. 34 points to nine. Penalty goal for Grant Fox. Just about two and a half minutes left in the game. Now Jones up to Clement. Ring. All Blacks break it down in centre field straight away. And that's it. It's all over. The referee blew the whistle and took off. Well, I reckon he uh, stopped it about two minutes early. Might have done the Welsh a favour, really. Some delighted All Blacks as they leave the field. Obviously, a uh, very proud moment for you. Congratulations, first of all, on uh, your test debut. Um, how did it feel out there? What was the atmosphere like? Oh, I was a wee bit nervous at the start, but after a wee while, the team started getting into it and settled down pretty quickly. Settled down and, uh, and just before half time, and I felt a lot confident in the second half. Yeah, you looked uh, very sharp out there, actually. You got around the track well and made a lot of good tackles. You enjoyed Played it? Played well, out there? didn't they? Played very well. This is Minder, by the way, Sean Fitzpatrick, uh, looking after the bash. Great balls and uh, putting in the scrum is excellent, Bash. Well done, mate. Thanks, How'd you Fitzy. enjoy it out there, Bash? Yeah, it was, it was a great thrill for me, you know, my first test, and especially to, to stop down, you know. 
Yeah, it was a great thrill, obviously, to score a try. An excellent try, too. Yeah, well, after Posty scored his first one, I thought, gee, I'll be there. Better get one here. <laughs> I think you're poaching in there, Posty. He was looking for another one, but you just managed to get there and hit him. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah. Excellent. Well done. Thanks very much. Thanks, Benny. Anyway, and I thought uh, Steve McDowell had a great game, too, and uh, Richard Lay all played well. Bash a little beauty in there. <laughs> Excellent all-round game. It wasn't just uh, the two tries that, that would have been good for you. I mean, you chased balls well all day and uh, made a lot of good tackles out there, chased hard. Um, you'll be happy all round? Yeah, I, I thought things went fairly well. Um, nothing I can really complain about or feel, feel pretty bad about. Um, Things seem to go well for, for me and, and the, the whole team. I imagine you'll be out having a couple of quiet beers tonight. Oh, yeah, I think we better have a couple of quiet ones, Benny. I think I might have a couple with you. <laughs> That's it. The Welsh part of the tour is over. Roll on Ireland. Everyone kept telling us that Ireland would be really enjoyable. You can even have fun just talking to guys like ex-international Mickey Quinn. I think the guys will enjoy themselves a lot more here. I mean, we found that when we went to New Zealand in 76, that we had a hell of a good time. We were liked down there because uh, everybody was saying, God, you're not like the Welsh guys at all, you know? <laughs> you know? And we, we'd never claim to be like the Welsh guys, <laughs> you know? But uh, we, we had a great time, and I think they'll have a great time here. All the New Zealand sides before always said Ireland was the best place to go to. I think it's more laid back here. We're easy going. Everybody's laid back here except the New Zealanders, I think. <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, every coach in Ireland isn't here to see this because they do everything at 90 miles an hour. Everything is intense, but there's nobody here to see it, except myself. Of course, I'll pass on the word to the lads. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> Controlled by Brook, and through he goes, and Zinzan Brook scores the first try of the game after just three minutes play. And Frano Bodica to restart. In the Irish tour opener against Leinster in Dublin, there's certainly no lack of never-scare approach from both sides. They're playing well, the home team. Away to the right. Kicking wide for Sexton. Two and Marla not in it. The try for Sexton. And they've lost it. Now here's Deans. Bodica. Tuingamala hands one man off. Not running with any real freedom. Here's Gatland again. He's had a great game. Now Schuler. Into the clear goes McDowell. Purvis. The front row have all been there again. Ten metres out from the 22. Huge line-up here. The All Blacks have to score if they can get it through. But they don't. So Lentz to survive again as Deans takes it out. Here goes Brook. Zinzan Brook. Back to Timu. And John Timu finally gets the try after an amazing build-up. Old Ping AJ is still not right. I wanted to kick him off my Tiki Tours, but I guess I'll have to put up with him for another couple of weeks. 
So now here's Deans. He's going to pop the kick over the top. Dun Lee, number 15, comes in. Tuigamala met him hard. Good challenge by the All Black winger. Tuigamala's rolled over onto his back. You can see that Dun Lee hasn't moved, and the All Blacks are concerned about him. Now that's nice to see that. The All Blacks have rushed to the scene because they were concerned, greatly concerned about Fergus Dunley, and he hasn't moved, and they've immediately called for medical assistance. And I think he might be uh, he might be out. And I don't think Bainga Tungamal is in great shape either. So let's have another look at this. It was a real clash of bodies, perfectly legal, as Dunley went in to, to go for the ball. Watch Tungamala. His eyes on the ball too. Look at him. He's looking up. Bang. And they really thumped and didn't Dunley go down. He just went head first. And I think he might have sustained concussion. So that's the sad sight of Fergus Dunley being taken from the field. Practice makes perfect. Monica. Monica holds up again. Nice pass by Zinzan Brook. Now here's Timu. Play continuing away to the left now, McCarr Hill. It's three on two. Bodica, good doubling around. And Innes is going to get a try. Going in at the corner. And then putting it down. That's definitely not Samoan fashion. It's pretty cold up in that stand. Just as well the boys are winning 36-9. Yeah, the weather was pretty bad. Real cold. It's glad they invented these thermal undoing. <laughs> they keep it pretty warm. But you know, as your hands in it, they were frozen in your toes. So you couldn't really run or kick the ball. I think the uh, the Irish are a bit more raw boned than that. You know, they uh, tend to get into it and lay their bodies on the line. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty tough from here on in. But uh, we'll do our best, give it a crack. And here on the left is the beginning of the national stud. Uh, the main entrance is just over here on the left, but we go around to the rear of it. I think it's a big day for Bernie. We reckon his father sent him out to buy a new horse. Even Grizz is impressed. He just might buy this one. There's also a million castles to visit in Ireland, including the old Blarney homestead. What the hell is that big? Fireplace. It is. What do you think it is? Well, it's going to go a long way. Underneath it or something? That's a long way down. <laughs> oh, again, I've had twice the luck. It's bad luck to kiss it twice. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Kiss it twice and you've got bad luck for the next seven years. <laughs> <laughs> While we're here, we might as well give the local ghost a bit of a shake-up. The haka doesn't seem to scare the men from Munster too much. In fact, nothing seems to intimidate them.
So Fox puts New Zealand onto the board first. The league scouts will be impressed with that. Uh, untidy stuff. Bradley taking a lot of time to get it back. And it's a try for Murray Pierce. And look at this for a celebration. He's had to wait five long years to score a try. <laughs> what a great moment. Even the boys in the stand are impressed. So off the floor, away to Fox. Banging it high. Stanley coming through, getting ahead of the ball. That's uh, Brook in there. Plonks it down. Sorry, that was Shelford. Oh, and it's four on one. And it's going to be a try. It's a lottery, but Innes gets it. And the final blow? Yep. Left to bash. Thirty-one nine, and another tough mission completed successfully. For the reserves, their job is to keep strangers out of the dressing room and try and help me. Nice to see the props looking happy. I don't think Buck's talking about the game. Maybe uh, TJ and Kipper are though. Score. for a bite to eat and Kipper had time to catch up with his family including his grandmother who still lives there Singing's in his outside playing with the locals. And he teaches them one lesson never trust a man in a black hat.
There's been a load of compromise on the road to my horizon. I thought we were bad. The boys are looking serious in the last match before the test against Connick at the Galway Greyhound track. It's moving up, eh, Botsy? Yeah. Yeah. Enjoyed it, eh? Yeah. Good to play in a big park like this, isn't it? Did you win? What do you play? Yeah. Good work. Who got the prize? Number 12, in the back. Jeez, look at this, this boy. How old are you? Um, 11. 11? Jeez, you look like Joe Stanley, don't yeah. you? Yeah. No? Good on you. Good there, mate. Yeah. Join the rugby? Yeah, yeah. how are you? Hey? Yeah. Right? You know who this guy is? Stay there. Nick Felder. He's a famous <laughs> golfer. Can't you see? <laughs> I reckon that's a good way to start any sort of game. Although Andy Earl doesn't show too much emotion as he walks away. Mind you, that's a lot of emotion for Andy Earl. There's one thing the Irish do really well, and that's drink Guinness. But they're not too bad at tackling either. Gats likes it so much here, he decides to come back after the tour. Meanwhile, the rest of the team were giving Galway something to remember them by. 40 points to 6. So here is Jamie O'Riordan, the hooker, who's just conceded a tight head when he needed to a conventional strike. Ball coming on the all-black side. Deans is scragged. Bodega has a run. He'll look to link back in with the forwards. And in fact, there's Buck Shelford, the all-black skipper. Good support from Andy Earl. All-blacks running onto this one a little better as they get to the 10-meter line. Here's Gatland. Flicks it out to McCarhill. Good hands here. Timu. And Ridge is going for the corner. And good try for the all-blacks. Matthew Ridge. And Matthew Rich has his first try for the All Blacks. Who's going to come in? If Mannion decides to leave the field. Meantime, Timu running strongly. One more pass. And Bodega's going to get three tries. Oh, and what a splendid dive it was in. Oh, it was very soft. Uh, it was actually, um, I'm not sure whether you're aware that it was a, uh, a Greyhound track. So there's a little bit, a lot of dog shit all around the place. You had to watch where you went. In fact, the first goal kick I took, I had, a big, had to wipe a big bit of... Uh, Dog, you know what off distracted me a little bit and obviously showed during the game. Other than hotel rooms and football grounds, the bus is where we spend most of our time, and this is what we spend a lot of it doing. <laughs> okay, roughly, so Bruce, you start being quite I've been, I've been five dollars. Okay, this is the card school, never changes. Gats, Bullet, AJ, and myself, G Dub, Botsy, and Bruiser. Sometimes we have open days, but not very often. Sometimes, sometimes Stevie hits and runs. We, um, and Fitzy every now and again when we're playing Yuka. Uh, we always play with New Zealand dollars normally, but uh, now we've decided that one pound is worth two New Zealand dollars. Are you enjoying this bus ride? Yeah, this is a great bus ride. We're two minutes into it and we've got six hours to go. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, the guys have been talking about you a bit, eh? Huh? The guys have been talking about you a bit, eh? What do you mean? Oh, just a few of the comments from the back seat, mate. What am I out? I'm all out for the back seat. Yeah, they will. Yeah. They think you're trying to buck the system, eh? Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, not my college shirt and that. No college shirt. Who are your co Where'd you get that jersey from? Is that, a, huh? is that an issue? No, but the, the call today was casual, mate. So I decided, right, I'm going to show my clothing flair. So you turned up at lunchtime with only one out of the 34 with no bloody college shirt on. You couldn't beat that, Dubby, could you? A bit, JK. No, no, I'll get my coat up. Yeah, man. You all right? 
Yeah. Are you going to sleep there? No. Hey? No. I need to sleep. Are you? No, fine. Hey? No. Fine. Are you? Yeah. Did you stick out uh, a night before the game? No. Well, who stuck that sign up there? Did you stick that up what there? What sign? You know, the one. Oh, that one. The one beside the scoreboard. Yeah, that could have been Herbie Purvis, though. Herbie Purvis. It could have been Herbie Purvis. There's only one Herbie I know, mate. Well, Herbie Purvis. Hey? There might have been. It could have been, you know. You snuck out and stuck it up, didn't you? No, I didn't. I could have been as well. Hey? I might have paid someone, but I never. And hey? just the week before the test, you get really toey. You'd be a bit on edge about getting a... No, I, 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 if I get on edge, I normally shoot away and see Gats. Oh, yeah? No, well, Sumo, he, he's good for a punch and you'd be, hey. be happy to make this side, eh? Yeah. Hey? It's quite I a bit of keep it. It's quite, I keep it. Yeah, that's right. It's quite, Pur quite, quite a bit been of competition, eh? Well. Well. Yeah, is, eh? Yeah. Pulled off an awesome tackle yesterday. Yeah, awesome, yeah. They're actually, they're actually yeah. quite, um... Hold on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Just... Keith Quinn's pretty good at his job. He can interview the whole All Black team all at once. The All Black forwards seem to be going pretty well leading into the Irish test. But not looking well is Joe Stanley. If he hasn't had enough with those chest problems of his, he's gone and ripped his neck. I don't think we want to go into the test without him. But those not in the test team sampled a little local milk at the Bailey's factory. Right, so if I was working here, I'd, you know, I'd try and break, I'd probably knock the top of a couple. Dumbo. You guys know? Who went to jail uh, for no. fraud after Not supplying Prince know. Philip and Harold Wilson with raincoats? Lord Kagan. I was what just about to say that myself, actually. The, the night before the test, uh, Trivial Pursuit is brought in to help kill a little January time. First 2001B. Correct. <laughs> 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 Stop looking at the questions, Foxy. Uh, uh, you got my abs? <laughs> 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 Icky. An old tradition is having your photo taken before the game. Not really for me. It's a bit of a worry. The rest in their photo. Shelford taking the New Zealand team across the halfway line to form up to the Harker. And as usual, it'll be interesting to see the reaction of the opposition team. It looks like they're going to line up very close to the All Blacks for the Harker. Two leaders today, Wayne Shelford and Steve McDowell. They're going to double the leadership. Now look at Shelford at the end of the Harker. He makes progress towards the opposition. I think it was a great reaction by uh, the Irish side to come forward and actually receive that challenge. And I suppose that would be the closest any team has actually come to us. And uh, our guys took the challenge up as well, and they actually moved closer and closer. And they got right in there, and uh, some of them didn't even you know, really jump straight up and down. They jumped forward and tried to go right into the opposition, which was good. Box kicks out in an electric atmosphere at Lansdowne Road in Dublin. The New Zealand team bids for 19 international wins in a row. Number four was Donald Lanahan, veteran lock forward. Today's referee from Australia is Sandy McNeil. And already Richard Lowe having a look. Somebody is on the deck. Somebody is on the deck. It's Wayne Shelford who took the ball and backed in to the Irish players as they kicked through there, a stormy beginning. The Irish come out steaming in the opening minutes, giving our defence pattern a great test. This is the critical phase of the game. Big jump there by Murray Pierce. Big game for him today. Rumours abound, of course, that it could be his last international. Basham, Fox, Schuster on the card. Went straight for Smith, who was good on the tackle.
Midfield penalty to New Zealand, but it's into the breeze. Might be quite a difficult one for Fox. Quickly taken line out, secured by Matthews. This is Jim McCoy, the man they call the real McCoy. And here's Ireland's first penalty. Yes, for exactly the same thing that uh, New Zealand achieved one a moment ago. 12 minutes gone. Well, if there was doubt about Brian Smith being an Irishman, I think he is now. <laughs> Three all. Basher. Schuster left out. Gallagher left out Terry Wright. Oh, Gallagher! And that is the most brilliant try of the tour. Scored by the man the Irish are claiming. But that was a true all black try. We thought we'd try the double miss because the previous few weeks in Ireland, they've you know, made no secret of the fact that they um, wanted to, to stop uh, the attacking fullback coming in. Well, Joe gave a lovely pass to Terry. Terry drew the, the fullback and popped up lovely for me. And uh, dotted it down. Of course, the try didn't mean the Irish are going to give up. I don't think they know how to. Attacking position for Ireland. Away to Smith, to Irwin. Mullen. Oh, crossing through. Hooks. He lacks support out there. Rainey through. Uh, O'Hara's across. Ahern. Smith kicking high into the goalposts. Stanley. Oh, beautifully blocked by Stanley. But they could break out here. Hello, whistle's gone. Whistle's gone. Absolutely crazy paving here right across the field. And look at Anderson waving to the crowd, urging support from the fans in the terraces on the stands. There's the kick over. And the New Zealand backs were up offside. Brian Smith has made the three points. And it's a 10 points to six ball game now. In the second half, we come so close to breaking away. Close, but not close enough. Will they go right? Will they go for the pushover? Shelford hasn't scored a try and two yet. Bishop lost it again in the line. And then tried to play it. Penalty for an Irish team, desperate in defence. McNeil was in good position to him. It was a fair call. Things are pretty normal at this stage. Kipper coming into the back line, although copping a bit of a late charge. Posty tries to score in the corner, but unfortunately just misses out. And all for nothing. Look at this from Hooks. Now, Hooks took a terrible blow there, but he did it for his country, didn't he? He stopped the try being scored. And I don't know whether Hooks knows exactly where he is at the moment. The touch judge on the near side, Jim Fleming, still has his flag up. Play goes on. Now, what will happen if New Zealand score a try here? As they may very well do as they hand clears. Here's Jim Fleming with his flag up, and he's kept it up for the last three minutes. <laughs> the referee has not a hope in hearing what's going on. Neither can the touch judges on the far side. Sandy McNeil looking in the direction. None of the players know the flag is up. I think maybe he should take a down Earl. Well, I think that line-out came back to almost the same position. 
Desperate defense by Steve Smith. The All Blacks attacking. This whole piece of play being played with the touch judges flag up. Fox running wide. And Fox has scored a try. And the touch judges flag is still up. Exactly. What a lovely run by Fox. I bet he couldn't believe it. Fox, who scores all the kicks all over the world, has scored a try. Referee McNeil looks confused. The crowd is booing. The only man, I think, on the field who doesn't know that this flag is up is Sandy McNeil. The ball boy is going to cross to tell the referee. The ball boy in the green tracksuit has gone across and said, Sir, the man's got his flag up. I saw the touch judge's flag up, and uh, then I saw that New Zealand were scoring a try. And when they scored the try, um, I said to the touch judge, you know, this shouldn't happen. Why don't you go on and tell him that you want him? And uh, touch judge said, no, I can't do that. But one of the people in the crowd said to me, go on yourself and go over to him and tell him. Now, what the heck will they do to sort this out? wonder what the heck they're talking about. Sean apparently stepped over the line when he was throwing the ball in. Take a look at the slow-mo. I don't think Foxy's going to be too happy. Grant Fox, who's never scored a try in a test match before, has had it ruled out of the record book. If I was Willie Anderson, I'd keep, I'd hold my cool here. Well, I feel very sorry for Grant Fox, because that was a beautiful run. He'd put that into his video library and have it there forever. Those young kids of his would relish watching it. There just seemed to be a bit of room on the blind side, so, I mean, it just... We just scooted around there, and um, some linesman decided on the other side of the field to interfere. That um, you know, that say la vie, that's the way it goes. It seems we're never going to get another try. A forward pass to Bash means TJ is going to get called back, and this try disallowed. Twelve minutes to play. Witten. Driving on again. That's McDowell and Shelford. Shelford in the van. Fifteen metres out. The big rumble is on. Fitzpatrick. Backs him away to Fox. Schuster to Gallagher. Terry Wright. Terry Wright scores. This has been a remarkable game of rugby. One that we'll remember for the marvellous try scored by John Gallagher. But also one we'll remember for the tremendous commitment of both teams, including the team that's behind on points at the moment, the Irish. That's Brewer, and that's Shelford, and that's a try for the All Black captain, and how appropriate. Fox converts. It's 23 points to six. The game is over. Right in the last minute of the last test match of the decade, one of the most powerful figures of the decade, Wayne Shelford, scores a try to end a remarkable game. The sequence of victories is out to a record number 19. And the 80s finish for the All Blacks tested to their limit, but as they've done since 1986, coming through triumphant. Of course, crossing the border to Northern Ireland is no place to fool around. Joe Stanley's been away from home too long. He simply had to satisfy his urge to drive, leaving the rest of us walking and hopping in his way. By the way, that's Huey, the bus driver in the suit. It's pretty obvious that things in Northern Ireland were a little different to what we're used to. In New Zealand, we've got meter maids. Over here, they've got bomb maids. Even outside training, security presence is fairly obvious. 
But to be honest, I don't find Belfast all that bad. For me, Belfast was time to say goodbye to one of the longest serving members of my Tiki Tours. AJ Wetton, ready to go back into action for the match against Ulster after keeping the physio busy for most of the tour. I made it through training. I'll be there. Hammy's good. Here we are in Belfast. Let's talk to Alan Wetton. <laughs> What are you reading, AJ? What are you oh, reading? A really, really interesting <laughs> book, guys. God, I'm right into a really juicy bit, eh? How come it's upside down? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one, guys. Looking at you today, Alan, you always seemed uh, very happy to get through training, 18 minutes of training without uh, a twinge or anything, and uh, obviously looking very happy to tomorrow's game. Is, is that the way you see it? Or? Happy yeah. you kissed me after training. I kissed, yes, I kissed Johnny, and I kissed... Bullet. Uh, Bullet, because you're both in the changing shed. Having a rest. But no, Shawnee, uh, the answer mm -hmm. to your question, old Ping Alan Witten was very, very happy indeed. I guess it's like, um, I don't know, maybe playing the first game on tour all over again. It's pretty good to put the jersey back oh, on. It's good to have you back there. And, uh, yeah, looking forward, looking to, it. forward to it. Hopefully and, uh, you can get your bloody throws right for a change. Well, you know, that's always a problem, but uh, tomorrow should be all right. And uh, I'm sure John will enjoy watching you from the stand watching yeah. the game. <laughs> Johnny, take your tours. Uh, Johnny, it was really sad because I, I had to say goodbye to Johnny. <laughs> yeah, that's to why we're rooming together uh, sentimental. Uh, I, had to, I had to say goodbye to him, so, uh, but he, you understood. He was understood. He, oh, he was, was there's no one more go. happier, it was hard for myself than Johnny, to say goodbye to me from Tiki Tours. What about the actual match fitness, do you think? You'll obviously, well, blow, obviously, you'll obviously yeah. blow for a while. And, uh, I'm going to blow, I was blowing a bit today, I must yeah. admit, but um, I guess, you know, I get a bit of adrenaline pumping and, and so forth and running out with the boys that, uh, I, I won't really be worrying about that, just getting on with the game. With Steve Gordon having a great game against the Irish champions Ulster, things are looking good for a top match. But it's not until the second half that the points really start to come. He's had a slow start, as one might expect him to. He's obviously pacing himself a wee bit having been out for so long. Little. Timu has left it behind. Carried on by Schuler. Big burst by Schuler. That's the goal line. That was wet. And this is the Sinzan Brook. And that's a fine try for Sinzan Brook. And that's kept the most aggressive game for Sinzan Brook tonight. That's Irwin again. Little is broken out for Carhill. Touring Abala. This will really test the man. He's clear. Touring Abala gets his try. So here they go for a tap. Desperately like to score a try. The first team to score a try since Leinster. The ball's been left behind. Here's Blair. Here's Irwin. And Irwin threw the ball away. And it's on here. Timu and Irwin. And I think the referee stopped one in here. Oh, dear me. And Matthew Ridge came in and sorted it out, and that was a bit unnecessary. But I think the referee might have stopped one in there. Well, I'd like to say this. Dave Irwin has shown an unfortunate attitude for the two games he's played against the All Blacks. He was stopped there, and in his disappointment when he passed the ball to the touch side, I think he let fly, and he started, and he's the Ulster captain. The big Ulster 21-3. Of course, one little fight couldn't spoil our time in Ireland, but people in particular were great. Once a match is over, a few quiet beers, and there's no worries. It's always a pleasure to tour Ireland, but it's time to move on to London. Get off here, boys. This is the London Underground. A great way to travel, if you know where you're going. This lot seldom do. London, of course, is full of interesting sights and many miracles of modern engineering. 
London! <laughs> Here we are! It's been a long tour, but the team is determined to end it in style. No good coming this far without winning the last game. One thing about this, this team here, it's a big family. And, uh, you know, like, you're all like brothers, and uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, it makes you stronger, and it makes, makes you want to perform. Uh, because we're all here, we've, got, we've all got the same uh, disadvantages. You know, we're away from our families, our girlfriends, our fiancés, our children. And we all want to go back home being successful. And uh, I think as a captain, I think uh, the team has been absolutely fantastic. And uh, again, I think uh, there's a number of guys in the side that could captain the side quite easily. And uh, as a captain, I find this team is very, very easy to captain. And, uh, you know, I'd go anywhere with this team. Uh, they're a great team and uh, some good young guys in the team. And I think uh, this tour brought out a lot of them. And uh, it's going to be a, a blessing in disguise for the future for New Zealand rugby. It's Piercy's last match for the All Blacks, and he's getting a royal send-off. The sort you could never forget. <laughs> Phil Matthews playing his third match in a row against the All Blacks. Gives the Barbars the perfect start. Though our guys always respond to a challenge pretty well. Flash up on the blind side, looking for Ennis. Ennis straight through. So simple, yet so effective. Buck's been in awesome form on this tour, always leading from the front. But he went into this match with his neck not quite right. And it doesn't help when people keep jumping on it. Neck again. Just look. Just look. Where is it? Just central? Same place. Nothing down your arms? No. No numbness and tingling up the side of your face? Just look it. Look it. A little bit of ice and water on it? No. No, no, no. Right. All right, Buck. You right, mate? Hey, mate. Hey. Good job. Thank you, Frida. Do you want a lot, Five and four against four and six. Pierce and Ackford at the front. Dooley. It's coming. They're getting line out ball from the Twin Towers. As they call the England locks, here's Davies. That's the goal line in the background. Penalty for the Barbarians. That's against Richard Lowe. And this is I definitely kickable again. And I think Shelford is in bad shape. And they make call in Zinzanbrook. Do you know, there was a good run when Davies went off the back. He ran straight at Shelford. I don't know whether he'd been told to because of the shoulder. But, but Buck... You just have a look here. He wouldn't actually take him. He sort of let him go or tried to just scrag him. Look at this here now. Look, he just sort of... He, you never see Shelford go like that. And then he realised he'd missed him. And you what? He, said, he suddenly realised Vela was a better part of you. Look, and he thrashes him then to the ground, and down he goes on that same side. What's, ha what's happening, Buck? Buck, come here. What's happening, Buck? landing on all the time. What, are you getting jarred up the side? Yeah, right up the neck. No, he, uh, he's had a problem with his supraspinatus and side of his neck. Just come back, stay still. Over it goes, and the Barbarians are back in the lead. And they lead by one point with five minutes to go to halftime.
Shepard is off the scrum. He's still looking a bit uh, stiff around the neck. I wonder if he's hanging in until half time to have five minutes of uh, Abercrombie's work. This is Underwood. Oh, lovely run by Underwood. He's short by five metres. Far Jones feeding. Referee Norling's been knocked over. He can't possibly see that. And then look at that. <laughs> The man is brilliant. He didn't want to go, but Buck knew for his sake as well as the team, he had to come off. And it certainly helps having someone like Zinni in the reserve bench. Away goes Bashup. Little up to Zinzanbrook, and yes, Zinzanbrook. A uh, great try. What a wonderful try. Great start. Let's have another look at it. Bashup goes for a little run. Now look at the sleight of hand here as he flips it up to Little and immediately transfers it to Brook. He has to stagger through the first one and almost gets grounded short of the line, bangs it over the line. What a great try. So the All Blacks now lead by 12 points to 10. This was one Barbarians match that certainly lived up to all tradition and pre-match billing. puts the kick and it's a good one too Gavin Hastings in after it Ennis is in there with him Bashup got it back gave it away to Walter Little Little down the sideline no support in field and here's Gavin Hastings across to Tony Ungood chased by and tackled by Schuster five metre scrum <laughs> way back across on the other side of the field where it crossed the line so the All Blacks with a five metre scrum Fox is coming to the blind. Innes coming the other way. Couldn't get it away to Zinzan Brook, but Earl has it. All Blacks putting the weight behind Andy Earl. Very close to the line. And over they go, do they? Can they get it down? Yes, they can. Could have been Richard Lowe. It is Richard Lowe. The smile tells it all. Okay. So the All Black backs running in the last stages. Here's a kick and chase. Terry Wright's got all the pace in the world. And what a great finish. Has he got it down? No, Clive Norling says no, he didn't. They spun him over on his back. Well, that's it. It's all over. The All Blacks are unbeaten on their tour of Canada, Wales Island, and here at Twickenham today, 14 matches unbeaten. And they've beaten the Barbarians three tries to one by 21 points to 10 and a marvellous game of rugby. But it's been successful and enjoyable and it's always good winning. It must be always very frustrating being a coach, you know, and uh, obviously knowing the way your team should play and um, just worrying in the seat, in the, in the stand the whole time and there's nothing you can do yourself. It must be very frustrating. Well, there's not much you can do, and especially as you say, you know, when you want your team to do one thing and you get judges like yourselves to go out there and do something different, well, there yeah, you can do. But well, well, we've been away for seven and a half weeks. One of the young guys have come on the tour. Have you had a good time? Enjoyed it? Yeah, oh, I've really enjoyed this tour. Um, great experience, especially playing with the older guys like yourself and Shelford and Whitten. Um, oh, yeah, the tour's been really good. Oh, what about it. Um, out there today? It looked like a really good, looked fast in the first half. Of oh, I was yeah. tired in the stand, but <laughs> must have been uh, enjoyable to play in, yeah. and It's a great game, great atmosphere. Um, well, I really enjoyed it because running game and um, I really like the running game and also Mr. Schuster. <laughs> <laughs> I've only really got one question for you Mr. Wiley and that's uh, whatever thought whatever uh, made you think that I was uh, a potential centre towards the end of this tour? Well I thought we'd have to give it a go sometime because I've heard you know John been saying how you'd like to play at centre because you want to show your pace but it looks as though that could have been a bit of a failure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
I'm still a bit, uh, still a wee bit, you know, tingly around the eyeballs. Right. <laughs> but uh, that's just part of it, I think, and I think that happens because we're such a close team. I think that's the reason for that. Emotions really uh, get at me at a, on a day such as this, and uh, especially at the end of the day when you haven't got time to worry about, about the emotions and emotional side of life, and then all of a sudden it all finishes with a, you look at the scoreboard and you've got the points on, and another victory to the All Blacks, and you know, that's just where you can just think, whew, yeah. thank goodness for that. See you later, brother. Yeah. Right. Have a look under your door. Yeah. All right, Ronnie. See you, mate. See you, pal. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good season. Okay. Hey, Stugent. What do you say at the end of a tour when the team splits after eight weeks? I guess, well, I guess we experience the good, the bad. Pursue. Call me irresponsible. Hold on, mate. Hold on. 